Furious Driving, proud to be supported by Diamond Bright, protecting, cleaning and caring for the Furious fleet and for yours with 10% off using code FD10. Follow the links in the description below. Hello and welcome to Furious Driving and welcome to the bubble. I have been meticulously crafting a hermetically sealed airtight enclosure. I'm going to seal that off in a minute, don't worry. <laughs> because <laughs> I am going to have a crack today at blasting some of the remaining paint off this poor little mini. This is, let's try and get further back from it. This is my 1969 Mark II Morris Mini Minimatic Auto, which has been lurking here in the barn for a little while while I've been stripping it down. I've not removed all the loom all the way because that would mean basically taking too much of it apart and I'm going to try and work around that. But today, I don't know how much I'm going to get done. I've not got it on the, on the jig yet, because I have borrowed a jig from someone, thanks Neil, um, for the loan of that. But what I'm going to do today is just make a start on the scuttle area, see how bad this is, and the engine bay area, because to, in order to mount it onto the, the jig and turn it upside down, the rotisserie, I need to be able to get all this bit polished clean. So I'm going to do this bit area here, and then, well, see how we go, see how bad it looks. To the front bit, see how bad that looks. And uh, yeah, crack on. I'll just remind you what tools I'm using for this. This from Machine Mart and Clark. This is um, the big, oh, I forgot what you call it, the, the sandblasting gizmo. And beyond the uh, hermetically sealed airtight chamber is the big, and I mean big, uh, air compressor, which we're going to fire up. Go on, fire up! Power on. ka -chink. Right, so it's actually surprisingly peaceful now that the, uh, the compressor has stopped compressing. It's with the big twin motors, it's, it sounds like you're in a World War II bomber twin engines of the Lancaster, what's well, a quad engine? Bristol Blenheim B25 droning, especially if you go upstairs, it makes the entire building kind of vibrate and drone like, like you're in a World War II bomber, basically. Um, so yeah, lots and lots of clothes peg holding this together. So if my accountant is wondering why I put clothes pegs on my expenses, that'll be the reason. Um, let's get some PPE on and then get cracking. I don't know how good or bad this is going to go, but let's hope for good. Let's hope we don't smother everything else in the barn with this stuff as well. I'm being a little bit careful around these cheeks because I've already had one snapping the string incident where everything just fell down to the ground. Uh, that was kind of annoying. So it's from how this works. It's a couple of weeks since I did it. Right, so now we have air in that bit. Air in that bit. Whoa, okay, that's quick. Oh yeah, plugs, this is loud. Why has it stopped already? There we go. Now everything's turned on, it should work. Wow. Blimey. Well, I've had a bit of a crack at this for, a, I don't know how long I've been doing this for, to be honest, but the areas I've done have come up, well, really, really well. I need to go over these bits again. Um, but where I've got, oh, wow, it's quite thick uh, leftover dust. It's like a desert down there. I was wondering if I could reuse that, but I do wonder if that would just clog up the um, machine if I try and reuse it. Wow, it's coming up really nicely. This is the area I'm going to do next, because I want to see exactly how bad that, um, that headlight area is, I suspect, quite bad. But also, my little hermetic tent 
That's done a pretty good job. There's a bit of mist in here, but overall, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Right, let's have a look at this front wing area. Oh gosh, I've got this pressure right just there. Pretty crumbly, but you know, as we now know more of an idea what we were looking at. Well, this has been slightly slower going than I had anticipated. I've got this um, bulkhead area here done, and this lower bulkhead area as well. Top of the wing, took a long time getting all this filler stuff off. Been around the headlight area down here, made a start down there. It's now that time of the day where I've now got to, having just got into my stride, got to run away and do a school run, which is always fun. I'm leaving this on because it's really dusty in this little encapsule right now. Uh, yeah, now I've got to run away to a school run, which is really annoying. I've just got ready, just got going into it. It is very, very messy. It's like the surface of the moon in here. Uh, so yeah, this is quite a lot messier than I was anticipating. Um, and I can't find my dustpan. I found the brush, but no pan, which is kind of annoying. Huh. Inadvertently got the A-post as well. That's all largely done underneath there and that lower panel down there. Need to get this bit done too, radiator area. But well, we're cracking on. Right, so I've had to go away and come back, but we're starting on day two of blasting. The thing I found is that it's a lot slower than I imagined it was going to be. It took a lot more effort to keep it going. And this uh, blaster drum, it does kind of clog up fairly frequently. Well, not clog exactly, but it stalls. So you have to give it a little shake just to get things moving in there and uh, I'm using more of the, the blasting agent than I thought I was going to as well. I'd also rather naively thought I could scrape it off the floor and reuse it, but the stuff that's coming off the floor is, well, it's grim basically, it's like dirt, so I'm not gonna be doing that. So my plan today, the front bulkhead, I wanna get, get the engine bay to a point where we can undercoat it or at least rust proof it. Um, maybe move on to the, finishing the scuttle. I'm also aware that I've gotta be undercoating this fairly rapidly after doing this because it will flash rust quite quickly. Luckily we're indoors here so uh, hopefully that will be in our favour. But I don't want to leave it bare metal for too long because obviously that would be a bad thing. Right, let's uh, crack on with some PPE. But I've got a better mask today and I'm going to wear the helmet thing as well to keep the dust out of my hat and my hair. So yeah, let's crack on. I do feel like I'm getting through way more of this stuff than I really thought I would do. I've nearly done an entire sack of it and I've barely done the engine bay yet. Yeah, the first couple of these that I poured in, I was really worried about losing your grain or two. Now looking at the floor I'm thinking, why why worry? Really why worry? Now this bit here is clearly some thick filler, so I'll just bash this off for you. Waste time trying to blast it off. 
Oh, I've got a brush underneath it as well. Okay, the, um, the sandblasting takes a little while to get through the, the, the filler, so we just have a bit of time doing this. Oh, come on, it's blunked up again. Well, that's the end of day two of doing this. Um, well, it's probably an entire one solid day of, of messing around. It's taken a lot longer than I thought it would because the, uh, the thing jams up so much. It seems to clog in the bottom of the tank and also it seems to, I've lost the end, it seems to clog in the end of here a bit as well. <clears throat> I think I might try and get hold of a, uh, an additional moisture trap. There's already a moisture trap built into there. I think there's a moisture trap on the compressor, but I think another moisture trap is the way forward. So there's no more dampness causing the, the sandy stuff to grit up. But we've got this wing top cleared. We've got the scuttle area mostly cleared. This whole bulkhead area is more or less done, which is good. Got the inner wings there started. Mostly done the radiator cowling. Generally, it's really good metal. I knew this was gonna be crusty and this is, well, frankly as bad as I thought it was gonna be. This side is rusty as well, but it looks like it's been repaired previously, which is interesting. Um, the other surprises are, this isn't rusty underneath where the filler was, but it's not quite level. It's been repaired previously, but I've looked underneath it, and inside there, there is a rusty panel on the back of it with new unpainted clean metal behind it. So I'm gonna to have to do some work on the inside of that. But this side has got rust, which has just been filled straight over. So this car is giving up all of its secrets as we start to clean away. This has been really good at finding its way into really hard to reach crevices that any other form of, of paint removal would have been really struggling to do. It's gonna take me a while to do this, longer than I thought it would. I was anticipating maybe a day, two days tops to do this, but yeah, I guess it's all to do with technique, isn't it? But we'll get there, we'll get there. So anyway, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this episode, then please do hit like and subscribe. Head over to furiousdriving.co.uk where the merch store lives. You can find some interesting and exciting stuff over there. Ah, and tune in next time when I'll be, well, more of this stuff really, won't it? Thank you for watching, take care and goodbye. Although I might do some Crown Victoria soon. The weather's nice. I say the weather's nice. The forecast is for solid rain the next week. Poor Crown Victoria. Mm -hmm.